I like to shock people. Uh, I mean, one of the many ways in which I like to shock people is to tell them that I dislike Paris or that I hate Paris. And it is partly true. I don't, I don't particularly like Paris. I never did. Uh, why? Uh, because Paris is so, so self-conscious about being Paris. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I, I don't like uh, people or places or anything that is too set in people's imagination. We have to po follow the way it's imagined. I mean, I took very few photographs of the Eiffel Tower, which I'm sorry, because they sell very well, but I didn't. And uh, in the very first time I came to Paris, I photographed a lot, but then it, it was just too much Paris. It was too, and I never photographed film actresses or, or, or actors, because they are too self-conscious about the image. I like to, 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 to make my own image of things. So with Paris, I always had difficulties. On the other hand, okay, Paris is a marvelous place, and people are very bright. I mean, you have the most uh, amusing conversations with people in the street, with taxi drivers, with people in the shops. So in that sense, Paris is okay for me. Well, I was born in a place called Abazia, which was the, uh, which before the First World War, so before, long before I was born, was the Austrian and Hungarian Riviera. It was the, the equivalent of Nice or Antibes for Vienna and Budapest. Uh, and my father was a doctor here at the sanatorium. And, he, well, he would speak Hungarian to his mother. He would speak German to my mother. He would speak uh, uh, Croatian or Serbian to the people who were serving at the hotel. He would speak Italian to the police and to the administration, and possibly English and French to hotel guests. So, you know, it, it was a place of, of, of many languages. And I, I grew up hearing many languages around me, which as a child, in the sort of silly way children have, I gave different values to languages. German was the top, uh, Hungarian was slightly distasteful because my mother didn't like her mother-in-law. Uh, 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 Slavic languages were definitely inferior because they, uh, they were spoken by servants. Uh, Italian had to be respectable because that was a school language and so on. So there were values attached to languages. And I do know, I'm very conscious of the fact that this is really the main subject of my work and of my photography, languages. I wouldn't say there's a favorite, there's a favorite. It changes as I go. I mean, you know, it's just the, the pleasure of, of using it. Now, when I write, it is easier, much easier for me to write in French than English or, or, or even in Italian. Uh, but in photography, uh, well, there are several languages between which I, I, I move easily. For instance, for the last, uh, what is it now, maybe five years, I've been working with a small compact camera. And in this case, because I'm uh, no, it's not this one, it's the other thing in my pocket, there's one in my pocket. Uh, it, it's this one. Uh, I'm only working with this one, out of laziness, and because I'm used to it. But also because it is a, a totally different language. It is not this language anymore, uh, but it is this language. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a different context to the world, a different way of seeing things. But it is also a different language for many other reasons. And I would probably say that what interests me most is this. Most of the photographers, strangely enough, are a very conservative lot. And they hated moving to digital. 
it has to do with because of being a wandering Jew. Uh, wandering Jews are that kind. Not really. And actually I'm, I'm I may be less famous than I thought I would deserve to be. Uh, exactly for that reason, because I, I, I swapped so often between styles and between approaches and languages. The story of my fashion photography is quite interesting, actually, because I've always been uh, uh, been uh, against, I mean, not, not wishing to follow trends. So my idea would have always been that my photographs would not go out of fashion. That what I photographed uh, in 58 would still seem uh, right and not out of fashion 20 years later. And I was, I was very proud of that. I thought I'm great because of that. And this went on for a long time. I mean, I was so much indifferent to, to trends and I eliminated them so much that it worked until about sometime in the 80s where I suddenly had, had the feeling I was totally out of tune and it didn't work anymore and my, my photographs were, were just uh, they just worked for magazines for all ladies like L'Officiel uh, but they were not really any more interested anymore, interesting anymore for, for Elle or Vogue. So I was, I, I really thought I was out of fashion. And then there was an important exhibition of my fashion photography in Paris. At what is now La Maison Européenne, which then had another name, it was another place. They made a beautiful exhibition and the press came and everybody was very complimentary and very positive and I thought, great now my fashion photography will start again. Well, it didn't, it stopped. After the exhibition, nobody asked me to take fashion photos anymore. I was part of history. And you can't be at once part of history and part of fashion. Uh, so I was out. And this was possibly one of the best things that happened to me. Because I went on to something else and it, it turned out to be just fine. And I don't regret it at all. I, I started something which, uh, which has been my, uh, which has interested me since, which is digital photography. In the beginning, it was making digital montages, for like photo montages, which all my friend photographers like Cartier Bresson and the Magnum people hated, and thought, you know, this was exactly the thing not to do and it, were, it was almost sinful. Anyhow, I did it for some time and I had fun. And then I switched to something else which was photographing sculpture, which was a marvelous adventure about photographing uh, 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 Romanesque, it's called the Romanesque sculpture in France. And, and then I went to something which I've been now been doing now for like more than 12 years, rather consistently, which is photographing everyday life. It could be in the streets in Boulogne, it could be traveling around, it could be in my home, it could be with my family, it could be with my cat, it could be with myself, and anything. I had the incredible luck of being a photographer between, say, 1945 and today and following all the changes that took place with photography and with vi visual arts and with uh, uh, visual impressions and so on. And the changes were uh, that in uh, 1952 when I went to India for the first time, nobody had ever seen what life was like in India and showing it seemed remarkable and important and interesting. Uh, nowadays, someone who, uh, 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 who uses internet uh, has seen everything. There's nothing you haven't seen. And if you, 
if you read about something, you just close your eyes and you know what it looks like. Even the inside of our bodies, even the outside of the moon, or the close-ups of the moon, everything you've seen. So there's no real way of surprising people by what they haven't seen. You can only surprise them by the way you look at things, which is your own personal way. And that's the only thing which could be interesting for them. So the change doesn't come only from my idea about photography, but also from, from the time which has changed. I had an enormous, immense admiration, I still do, uh, for Cartier-Bresson and also for some of the other Magnum photographers. And my great dream was to be part of Magnum. And as it goes with dreams, when the dream came true and I was accepted with Magnum, it didn't seem the right thing anymore. So it didn't last very long. I don't have any photos my, on my walls. I have them in, in what I call my museum, yes. But I never, look, I never go and look at my museum. If you come and visit me, I'd be very proud to show you my museum. But I don't I go. I mean, I have them in my mind. I don't have to look at them. Uh, so I don't look at them. And I didn't, now in Paris there is apparently a great show of Dan Arbus, and I didn't find time to go and see it, because I've, I, I've seen many books, and I've known her personally, and I have most of her photographs in her mind, so I don't think I would really be surprised. I mean, I would first mention three as uh, as the ones that I admire most, which are Cartier-Bresson, uh, Irving Penn, and August Sander. And the reason why I admire them is because it's, in the three of them, there's a great respect for what they photograph. There's a lot of, of dignity. Dan Arbus, whom I had the the pleasure, the honor to, to meet several times, uh, like uh, Elliot Erwitt, uh, like several of the Magnum photographers, uh, like Edouard Bouba, who was my great friend for many years, and uh, Giacomelli, who was also my great friend for some time. Well, you know, if I had to start life again, I would rather be a writer than a photographer. Well, no, uh, for several reasons. Uh, the, uh, but you're touching a sore point. Uh, a sore point because I'm, uh, uh, it's one of my weaknesses that I'm... Uh, it's not that I don't appreciate music, it's that I don't have much talent as a listener. I can't sit there and listen. And my mind wanders, wanders somewhere else. So I'm, uh, I, I, I'm uh, I, I don't know much, I, I do appreciate, obviously, you know. I, I love Bach and I love Mozart. And uh, sadly, I'm not very open to, uh, to contemporary, to either to contemporary classical music or to contemporary uh, uh, rock music, whatever. If I was more sensitive to music, there would, certainly would be something in my photographs that is not there. So it is, it is, it is certainly something that is missed. Uh, but to the other question, whether I did I use music in the studio when I was working, the answer is no, never, emphatically not. Which, of course, all the people who worked with me hated, and the models were very unhappy because music helped them. Uh, but the music that I would have played in the studio would either have been music like uh, rock music, which I disliked, or music which I liked, and that would have been much worse, because that would have made whatever the girl did look marvelous to me, and of course it wouldn't have been so marvelous once I saw the photographs, so I distrusted that. <laughs>